Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a weekly news and review for October 10th, 2021, 2021. So we've got some masterpiece news. More and more and more X Transbots reveals, or more or less repaints. Got some updated pictures from Iron Factory, so a little bit going on in the Legends news. And although it's not really news, we got some Star Wars stuff that was able to be ordered, so we kind of go back over some of those things coming up. First off, some good stuff going on at Show Z right now. We've got the Bad Cube Grump gears going into stock at Show Z right now. It is $69.99 and this figure, if you weren't paying attention, was almost 300 bucks earlier this year till the reissue was announced. It's the only masterpiece gears that's out there really. And I do kind of anticipate maybe within the next three years someone else will make one, but it's the only game in town for now. Also up for pre-order is the Mechanical Alliance, the SX-02P Sound Warrior Soundwave with Ravage, perfect version now. This was already released before, but this is a cheaper option, a cheaper alternative, and more of a cleaner G1 coloring. And if I understand this right, the first one that came out, that one had two modes to transform, so it's a triple changer, so it had two alt modes, and so this one should too, but it doesn't show any pictures of the alt mode. I guess you just assume that you know it already. 85 bucks versus the first version, which is now on sale for 125 and finally up for pre-order is the NBK-07 Gun Prime. Now what this thing is, it is a, an actual gun that transforms into a robot, not a robot that transforms into a gun. So let's just get that clear because this is 20.47 inches tall, or that's the height of it, it's due out in December, and it does turn into this. This gun is, I think, a full-size looking gun to put on a gun shelf or whatever, uh, interesting idea that they're doing it when they first announced it I had no idea when it was gonna come out or who was gonna carry it but it looks like shows he's got it but there's no price as of yet this week X Transpots came out and they didn't say this but they showed this that they are very very proud of their Toro mold their cliff jumper mold and they're not just making three more colors or six more colors of this with 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 I guess is the bubble jumper is it, I think that's what it is, and then there's the blue one, and then they say it's the dark version, so like a, I, I don't know, dark version. There are specific reasons why they're colored what they're colored, and I saw some of it. I didn't quite keep up with all of it, but uh, six different colors coming, and let me go ahead and get into the next three. So there's a white one, a turquoise one, and another red one. I think the turquoise one looks really interesting, actually. It's just seen to stand out out of all these releases that one stands out the most but really interesting that they're going to dial so deep into these but x transbot seems to be putting out a lot of releases that are coming and i think they'll be able to do it but how long will it take and once they do a production run just changing out the colors and stuff doesn't seem like it's that hard yeah and the alt modes still pretty much look the same so it's interesting they have the real world alt modes and it's the cliff jumper kind of thing going on with all the different colors if you're in on these 90 bucks each they're also coming out with two other recolors of their boost and their hatch so boost and hatch are each getting recolored you got yellow boost is what they call this one and then the other one it's the mm g6 murrow and that's supposed to be rook so and i think what i what i get from rook is that's a comic version of a figure but anyhow they still look really cool i know a lot of people that are frustrated with this mold and the design but I wonder if they made any improvements to the mold, any improvements to the design with these recolors. That would be interesting to find out. 90 bucks, and these aren't due out for a year. September 2022. So more images of Takara's, what is still being called a masterpiece, and I still feel like it's a chug, but it's the masterpiece train bot Shuki. And I, I've got to tell you, there's a little bit of mixed results here. First off, it doesn't look bad. And I'm sure Takara making it is going to be good. It's, it's going to be a decent figure. It looks great in the train mode. Uh, the bot mode looks pretty good. Combined mode's going to look okay. But here's the weird part. There, I think there's still going to be six of these. And they're $210 a piece. Now, if you order from Japan, you could probably get the conversion over to 177 you probably get it cheaper amazon japan or some other these places like that 
but uh, if you're getting it through a U.S. retailer, TF Source has it up for $210. $210. Uh, I don't know. Times six. The math on that. That is crazy. I didn't think they'd be that expensive, and I thought they were going to come as a set. So I was wrong on a lot of things, so I guess we're going to get one at a time as they come out. But that's kind of crazy. But here's what it comes with. It comes with the train, a uh, chest piece, a gun, and two other pieces, and, a, and rail. So, I mean, like, you're going to get actual rail on it. So, it, this is something like, what's Takara going to do for a combiner? Uh, maybe it's just because they probably don't think it's going to sell that many. Maybe they're going to make that many. I don't know why it's so expensive. That is crazy expensive. But here's the other weird part about it. Moon Studio is putting more pictures out of their train bot. And this is kind of, maybe it's a, it's Zeta not learning their lesson. Well, we've got a new name, so we can do whatever we want. But I think they should kind of back off a little bit if Takara is working on theirs, but they're still going full steam ahead. Theirs is supposed to be out in December, but uh, a couple things about this. First off, the Moon Studio, I did not know they'd be the same size as MP10. Depending on the angle you're looking at here, maybe even bigger than MP10. That is a massive figure when it's combined. I like that size. I like that scale. That is where Masterpiece scale should be for these things. Sadly, they made they made the cancel pre-order on my... I canceled like 15 pre-orders. Uh, it's hard to keep up these days. And they had to go. They look good. It, it was really hard to hit cancel, but uh, I'm not going to be getting these guys. But they look amazing, and I look forward to other people's reviews. So TFC Toys updated some pictures on their Weibo page about the TFC S. TC-02 Tyrant, the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover Dominator Megatron, and it's big, it's beefy, it looks good. I think on this one, like in my personal opinion, I think the alt mode is where this figure shines, but it does look pretty solid. You can tell it's sort of a Megatron-esque type of figure, and then we get into the tank, and, and the tank is pretty cool too. I think it's a great looking vehicle, and you got like a little jet that goes with the tank and all that kind of stuff, but, but what really I think is coolest is the airplane mode the jet mode and that looks pretty awesome actually and the more i think it's like the it looks kind of like the gi joe is it the mamba the mamba but um I've, i got one of them uh so uh, one that looks like this up there so i think it's called the mamba and this with the three cockpits and all this stuff really cool it doesn't have the the mamba has like double blades but this still looks really awesome kind of goes right in line with their rolling thunder that they've already made tfc Toys is all over this, G.I. Joe is hot, and these people are smart, knowing whatever franchise is hot, let's grab some of that. So 3 is showing off some stuff this week, but this is their MDLX Optimus Prime. It's a teaser. This is supposed to be a lower price offering, still having all the same articulation and the high-end paint and all that kind of stuff going on, but for a cheaper price, don't know the price yet, but there's also a Bumblebee that they've already put out, Megatron, Rodimus, all that kind of stuff. So lots of teasers that they've got coming out this week and i'm going to show you even more teasers here in a sec here's their bumblebee it's officially licensed approximately five inches tall so they're smaller than what they've been doing in the past and they're kind of getting into a market i think they're trying to get into more or less a, a masterpiece market and not into the super massively large figure market i think that it's smart to go with a lower price point and a smaller figure and it really makes a lot more sense and a sign of the times 60 bucks versus the 200 dollars price points they were pushing in the past also some reveals of megatron and rodimus which i i understand megatron it, it seems weird you would think they would push like a, a galvatron and rodimus at the same time but anyway they've got to kind of knock out all the big hitters at the same time or really close at the same time but anyway they look pretty interesting and I kind of like the way they're going with this, the direction they're going with this. They are a bit of a stylized take. They don't transform, but they're officially licensed. Super 7 has some stuff going on, and they reveal the Target exclusive, the Golden Lagoon, Optimus Prime Megatron. Like, let me tell you about mold degradation. <laughs> They've made so many of these. There's nothing going to be left of that mold here in a bit. But anyway, uh, this is now the 5th or 6th or 95th iteration of the Super 7 reaction figures for Optimus Prime and Megatron. They've done Standard, they've done Shiny, they've done... I think they've even done Clear. Anyway, still kind of cool. I have the first release of these. I didn't buy into all of the other iterations of it. It's going to be out in 
February 6th of 2022. But the cool part about it is, in my opinion, how it looks when it's carded. Because I think the vast majority of collectors are going to buy this and not open it. Uh, my first intention with these would be to sub out characters I don't have in my Legends collection. Like, like say, Jetfire or something like that. But uh, past that, we have all of these main characters already with decent representations in the Legends collection. So, vast majority of these are going to stay on the card. And how they look on the card is very important. I think they do look pretty good. And Super 7's in the holiday spirit. I gotta tell you, Christmas is my favorite time of year. This uh, winter is my favorite time of year. Of course, it's hot in Oklahoma. I like a break from that. But here we go with an Optimus Prime in a Christmas deco. That looks really cool. I, I don't know. Uh, as much as I bash them just making the same figure with different colors, I might actually get this. Uh, I might get this because this might be one of those things that you pull out every year with Christmas stuff. And that is kind of smart. Last year, I didn't understand why Star Wars did it. And that was a huge hit. They're doing it again. And so I guess it's going to carry on forever and ever and ever with Christmas Transformers and Star Wars. All right, so there is a video out there floating around showing off a cup comparison of the the first version of x Transbot lock versus the lock, I guess, 1.5 is what people are calling it. And they've made some changes, but it still transforms mostly the same. I think they've reinforced some parts so they don't break, and the transformation went through, of course, without breaking it. And uh, some of the parts where where we'd see the the thighs hang up don't hang up as the first one did. A few of the issues have been resolved. I look forward to getting mine, and as soon as I find out how to get mine, I'll tell you how to get yours if you order the first defunct version. So looking at some Legends news, we've got Iron Factory out there with their EX-51 Power Falcon, and this is their take on Power Glide. Now, I don't have a Legends Power Glide, so I'm probably going to have to get this one. I don't know if they've put this one out before, and that now this is another one coming out, or not, because I don't keep up with Iron Factory as much as I should, but if they're going to make something that no one else is making, I think I'm just going to jump on it and knock out that character in my Legends. I think it looks pretty good. It is stylized a bit, so with the stylized look, will it blend and mesh well with your G1 look and stuff? You know, the thing with Legends is, from a few feet away, a little stylized, a little G1, still looks good. The, people like the different take that Iron Factory takes on these because it is a bit edgy, so that is interesting. Here he is in his uh, alt mode. And he almost looks like he's like the Avengers Quinjet, a little bit. I mean, come on, does he look a little bit like the Quinjet? Still, it's cool, it's modern, it's a bit of an updated take on a classic character. Getting into, there's, and this one's called the EX-54 Bay Razor, and that's that's their version of Beachcomber. Now, I missed out on the Magic Square Beachcomber because I was, I was still unsure if I was going to be Legends at the time. And once Magic Square sells out, it usually sells out unless it's a main character. Side characters sell out and they stay sold out. I don't know why they don't bring them back. It's, it's weird. Uh, I kind of think that New Age always comes up with an excuse to bring them all back. But anyhow, still looks good. And you know it's Beachcomber. Uh, the, the lower leg area is really thick. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But aside from that, it's a pretty good looking figure. Here we go with the... This looks like a radio control car. I, got, I, I swear, it's a, it looks like a radio control dune buggy because... RC cars were based more or less off a dune buggy design back in the day in the 80s. This feels so retro, so 80s, so dune buggy at the same time. So I was right and I was wrong about the HasLab victory saver. And the right part was I said it's definitely going to back no matter what. Even though people were saying, like they say with every start of every HasLab, it won't back. But uh, it backed. Now, I was saying it wouldn't hit the 20, and it's it's at 19.1 as I film. I'm pretty sure it it has one day to go as I'm filming this. At the end, midnight on Sunday, midnight tonight, you guys, if you want one, you got to get in on it by midnight tonight. And then they'll bill your card either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever they get around to feeling like billing your card. But the thing is that if you want this, you have to pay now for... 2022 delivery on this thing 180 bucks plus tax so close to 200 bucks i'm sort of on the fence on it because of 
it unlocked everything. It's going to unlock everything when it hits 20, and it's at 19.1. Almost a guarantee it will hit 20. Now, make me wrong, but you know what? Sometimes it feels good to be wrong. Okay, so the Black Zarak is a figure for a Titan class Scorponok repaint, and they did it back in the G1 era, and it was a Japanese only exclusive, hard to come by. Some people view it as a holy grail. Now you can just just go to one of the online retailers and pre-order it for the same price as the regular Scorponok. I've got one pre-ordered. This is one of the ones I kept on my pre-order list. But the thing about this one is that they are going to open it up for the Takara Tommy Mall and all that kind of stuff. But they put a few more pictures out about it. I'm pretty excited. But I do have a question. Will DNA Design do that amazing upgrade kit that they do for these figures? The four the Scorponok for this one, so it could be the same size next to your Scorponok. Here it is in the alt mode, and the gold and black and red look amazing on this figure. It's just very nice looking figure. I knew I was going to have to get it as soon as I saw it uh, up for pre-orders, and so that's a nice looking figure. And I, I really think the Scorponok's a good looking figure too. Here is the base mode, and it just really pops. And I, I know you're going to start seeing, when this comes out, you're going to see a lot of people putting these side-by-side, side-by-side uh, comparisons with their Scorponok, and side-by-side -side in all the different modes. This would make a nice double base mode. Put them side-by-side -side as bases would look amazing. So anyway, uh, this thing should be out in December, is what I'm hearing. So if you have been paying attention to your Walmart, you're going to see these vintage versions or retro versions of the Beast Wars Transformers showing up 23 bucks for the deluxe and then for the 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 Voyager well see I think they were Voyager back in the day but their leader class is what they're considering them now but the Prime and the Megs those are 50 and this is the next one in the line of the deluxe and it is the Tigatron and I can't remember how much this was originally when it was originally on the shelves back in 1996, but so it's kind of cool to have these back out. I don't know if I'm in on them at the price points they are, but I kind of have a gut feeling that most of these will be caught on clearance. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of have that gut feeling. I don't know if I'm in on them, but at clearance, I'm definitely in on them. But it's really interesting at the same time you get the old and the new maybe 2021 is going to go down as the year of beast wars because the beast wars collectors are getting so much they're getting their vintage figures put back out again they're getting updated really great sculpts of the original figures and at the same time and they're all coming out around the same price but still this one looks pretty good and it should be showing up soon in the stores it's already up for pre-order at several different places so there's talk about this legacy collection. So if this picture is correct, there's a few things in this picture. If it's correct, if it's accurate, if it's official, that are interesting. First off, in the upper left of the picture, you see the legacy collection um, logo. Is that going to be the new legacy logo? It's like, is that what we're going to see in 2022 as all the logos and other stuff? Plus, uh, this Titan class version of Metroplex is not what I expected. <laughs> it's the Cybertron Metroplex. And I had to look it up and go, is it close to what the Cybertron Metroplex looked like? And, and it is really close. It does look a lot like it, to tell you the truth. So anyway, so this is a 22-inch scale triple changer figure. And it features robot mode, uh, work bot mode, and excavator mode. And it includes large axe, bucket, scoop, accessory. And it's going to be, okay, here's the thing. 189.99 so are all of titans going to be 190 now is that going to be a new thing or is this going to be maybe an online exclusive or something like that so lots of questions being raised around here i don't know who the uh family dollar that's all over this thing is but anyhow i'm curious to see if this really comes to fruition so getting into some movie news, there's a lot going on with the movie. They're still working on it. They're filming it. Michael Bay's involved, but he's not. He's not the top guy. So uh, that's that's going to be a good thing. Anyhow, it's exciting to see what's going on in all of these this rise of the beast and what's going to happen with this movie. 
I'm interested in seeing what happens with the movie myself. I don't know what's up with that VW van in the back. That's kind of interesting there. There's a lot of new designs that are going to be integrated into this. We're seeing that. And there's one more new design that's not in this picture that we might want to talk about. So I made a joke in one of my videos about... I don't know what Nightbird transforms into. I seem to have missed that point. Had uh, about 20 people tell me she didn't transform. <laughs> Which is true uh, from the show. But anyway, here it is. This is Nightbird. And quite an interesting take. We actually get to see an alt mode of that character. I'm not sure if that character is going to have a gender. <laughs> is it going to be a the female like the Nightbird in the cartoon? I don't know anything about this stuff. But it's still interesting that they're moving forward. They're including that character. So it's fun to see what's going to happen with this movie. So last week ran kind of long. So I, I cut this part out because it was just a fuzzy image. And usually we get a really solid image the next week. So here we are with Takara Kingdom Ultra Magnus into Osiris Prime Cabri Deco. And they have the uh, Tensegrity, I don't know, Tensegrity stand stock in images. The anti-gravity pedestal base. There's a silver one for uh, Optimus Prime set, and then there's the a couple of different color ones. So Optimus Prime with his anti-gravity whatever, that's sixty-seven dollars, and then it's gonna be out in March. And then bases by themselves are going to be about eighteen bucks a piece. Now, this is a Takara Tommy Mall thing, I think. I think this is only gonna be available at Takara Tommy Mall or. Uh, Denki Hobby. And with that, this is just kind of interesting what's going on with all this. So here is the the base in its basic configuration. You gotta put it together, you know, it's one of those things like we hear on an 80s commercial. You gotta put it together, but that's all the components to it. Looks pretty interesting if you want the anti gravity base. Uh, for display purposes, they know that people like to display their stuff. So there it is. The most interesting part about this is the fact that this is basically the Earthrise Ultra Magnus repainted to be Optimus Prime. I didn't see this coming, but it's still kind of interesting. And it's a little more expensive because you're getting the, the base with it, the anti-gravity stand and all that. And uh, the uh, cab mode looks interesting also. So, looking at all this, it's one of those things that is this something that you want or you need or are you just happy with your Earthrise Prime? A lot of people collect primes by every prime that's out there and most every prime sells. So it's kind of basic idea. They can make anything into a prime and they know it'll sell. Getting into some Star Wars news and there's not really a whole lot. We have a holiday wiki leaked from uh, Amazon Mexico. And this is going to be the 6 inch scale, so the Black Series. And they did that last year. They're doing more this year, of course. That's just kind of how it goes. It's interesting to see that they're going to include more uh, different characters. I personally want to see more original trilogy collectors. And I wonder if the way they do this, you can literally just pull all the holiday stuff off and make a standard Chewbacca, you know, the other 364 days out of the year. But it's one of those things that you know is going to sell because they did really, really well with holiday editions in 2020. I gotta say, we're living in the era of Star Wars repaints, rehashes in the Black Series. We're getting the Amazon exclusive Artillery Stormtrooper. And so it's up for pre-order. Uh, should be one of those that I think it'll be easy to get, more or less. I didn't check if it's sold out yet. It wasn't sold out last time I checked. But it's like we're getting all just repaints. And I'm not super duper excited about just getting repaints over and over. But... Some people might, that's just not me, and I think that uh, an army of stormtroopers might actually look a lot better with a little bit of different variation in between them. So this past week we had other stuff coming up for pre-order, and so I'm understanding that this Antoc Merrick X-Wing sold out really fast. And it's one of those things that I thought would linger, possibly get on clearance. Maybe those days are behind us, but I kind of was shocked about it, we'll probably see it show up in stores and it'll have a healthy delivery to the stores. I'm not sure why the pre-orders are selling out fast on an item like this, like the 15th iteration of this exact same mold. Not sure. 
This past week we saw the pre-orders go up. <laughs> pre-orders going up for the carbonized vintage collection. Now here's the thing. If you missed out on the first run, the carbonized is another chance to get these figures. Maybe that's something you need. But the thing about it is that I am kind of tired of buying them over and over again. So I'm out on them. I'm not getting these. They're not numbered. My belief is they're not numbered. I don't think they carry their original number. I think these are unnumbered. Well, I might be wrong, but I think they are. I got to go check my other carbonized stuff. But anyway, I'm kind of tired of repaints over and over and over. I'd like to get new product and I don't want to keep buying the same figure and get all the different repaints. But at the end, I might regret not getting these because the card back is double the thickness, if not triple the thickness. They are very high quality and the little bit of extra shiny paint, you know, shiny things are fun. Sorry, there's not more in the Star Wars realm of news. We got more things happening during PulseCon that's going to happen during TFCon. It's almost like they are something blocking TFCon. But anyhow, what do you think about this week's weekly news and review? What else is going on out there that I missed? Because I really do want to know. Like and subscribe. And Tiberium Hanger, out.